How's it going everyone? I'm Contemption and today we're going to talk about early game commanders. I know I have a main with a lot of days on it, but with my new jumper account in this kingdom, it's only one day 12 hours old and I really want to get this video out to new players in this kingdom, in our alliance and even in kingdom chat just to kind of get people in the right direction. These are my opinions. There are other opinions out there, but this is how I'm going to play the game and how I've played the game in the past. That has really worked well for me. So stick around. We'll go through some of the commanders I suggest, some of the commanders you really should avoid, and then other things you should be aware about before KVK1, how much time you have, and what you can actually do in that amount of time. So let's take a look and get into it. And if you like these videos, please hit the like and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Okay, so first off, this is a jumper account. Card up at the top. I've jumped my way to this kingdom. I'm pushing power. I've got 414,000. It is going to be a free-to-play account as long as I can handle it. Um, it's been pretty easy so far. I just spent money on Crystal Tech on my main account, so I'm okay with not spending for the time being. Um, commanders. Now, I've seen some people in Kingdom Chat, Alliance Chat. I've been in a few alliances since I got here talking about the commanders they're going to work and use. And I just wanted to get this out there to make sure people aren't spending their stars and experience tomes on the wrong commanders only to have commander regret again later, make a new jumper and go to another kingdom. Let's try to avoid that. Let's go over first off the commanders you should avoid. Okay, avoid leveling up, using your stars, using your experience tomes, thinking that they're field fighting commanders when they are not. And that is, of course, any legendary gathering commanders. Cleopatra, not good. Don't spend any universal legendary sculptures on her. I don't even suggest spending experience tomes this early in the game. Just leave her alone. You'll, you will get her from strategic reserve. I would still work a different commander before her. Sion Diok is the next one we'll talk about. She's a lot better for gathering. I suggest just completely leaving Cleopatra alone for the time being. Sion Diok, again, not PvP. She is only a gatherer. Do not use her out in the field. You will get destroyed. Do not waste sculptures on her. I would just leave her for now. Work on her later. But now is not the time to touch any of these gathering commanders, including Ashida. I don't think he's worth anything. He's a good gatherer later on in the game when you have the extra experience, when you have the extra stars, but right now, leave him alone. Do not spend anything on him. His skills aren't going to do anything for you. He's got two skills that are meant for gathering. He's not focused on one troop type. Leave him alone. Terrible commander. Okay, next legendary commander you should skip. Uh, let's see here. El Cid. Not good. That's my opinion. Other people think he's okay or good. That's great. I suggest you don't touch any Archer Commanders except for YSG until later on. Until Season of Conquest, really. Edward is kind of broken. Lilith hasn't fixed him yet. I would leave all legendary Archer Commanders except for YSG alone. Julius Caesar, again, don't touch him. I think he's trash. I did work him in my first account and I had huge regret spending Universal Sculptures on him. He is terrible. CPO, half the time, is better than Caesar. So just leave him alone. Freddy ha is not good. Unless you can buy him from the daily, which right now isn't even unlocked for him yet in our kingdom. Um, I wouldn't touch Frederick. His first skill, his main skill, his primary skill, isn't even good until he's expertised and he's not focused on one type of troop type. I don't think he's good. You shouldn't spend any time on him. Hannibal's only for whales. You're not going to see him. Most people on this. Mehmed isn't bad. Mostly good in sunset. Uh, city rallies if you're a whale. He does do good area of effect damage. He does boost skill damage, which is great. And troop capacity, where's his skill damage? Right there. Skill damage. He can be decent. But at this early of the game, leave him alone. Ethel Fled is fantastic. If you want to level her up, just make sure the first skill is set at 5. 
I think that should be self-explanatory. We will go over that in a second, though. Uh, Ragnar. I don't know enough about Ragnar. I don't think he's good. I don't think we should use him for the first KVK. I have never seen him in a Sunset lineup, a Lost Canyon lineup, field fighting. I've never had a report on him. I don't know anything about him. I don't think he's good. Just stay away from him. Lubu, I don't think we can get him anymore. I have him on my main, but I don't think we can even get him anymore. Maybe Card King? Maybe? I'm not sure. Um, now for Commander, Legendary Commanders, you should work. If you're doing Money Moto, always good. For the first KVK I did, I had Money Moto behind Pelagius to hide him because uh, Money Moto or Mina is a big target in open field. If you're running around with him, you're going to get targeted first. Um, Tao Tao is his secondary. I wouldn't run Tao Tao as a primary unless you're hunting farms because he's fast. He's got the mobility tree. But if you have Mina and Tao Tao, Mina should be primary. He has the skill tree. He's going to get the skill damage off faster. Way better to use Mina primary. Richard, fantastic commander. For me, I'm going to do him at 5-5-1-1, which means his first skill is going to be 5, second skill is going to be 5, and then it'll be 1-1, one, one, and I'll level those up over time. You can just do 5-1-1-1. One, one, one. That's good too. Nothing wrong with that. He is a fantastic commander. I still use him in Sar in Sunset Canyon, Lost Canyon, Ark of Osiris, even field fighting in Season of Conquest. I've used him. I think he's great. People don't like targeting him. That's why you can put an area of an effect commander like even Ethelfled works good behind him because he actually does march speed reduction, which puts Ethelfled's expertise into use. Uh, Sun Tzu behind him, YSG behind him. There's lots of options behind Richard. Charles Martel is also awesome. I will do him at 5-5-1-1. Um, first two skills are the best. I like putting YSG or Sun Tzu behind Charles Martel because he gives a 30% damage bonus on the skills. So once you cast this skill, you're getting a shield. You're also getting a damage bonus on either Sun Tzu or YSG's um, area of effect skill. You could also put Ethel Fled behind him. I've done that before. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. YSG, hands down the first commander. You should be expertising. His circular area of effect is the best in the game. Fantastic commander. Also has 50% increased skill damage. You will use him forever. I still use him. I will never be able to not use him just because he's so good in open field. In Sunset Canyon, Lost Canyon, Ark of Osiris, he is fantastic. Um, any other commanders on here? Obviously, Ethel Flood. Mulan is a very expensive commander. She doesn't come in a wheel. She doesn't come in Mightiest Governor. She does come from Gold Keys. It's a very solo process on Gold Keys. I have, I think, one commander left on my main after 1,100 days. That is still not exper expertise from Gold Keys. Probably just unlucky, but still, Gold Keys is not the way to expertise a commander Mulan is good but Joan of Arc is better just focus Joan of Arc leave Mulan alone not worth it early game um, let's jump into obviously the epic commanders Sun Tzu being my favorite I'm going to level him up to 60 he will probably be behind someone like Charles Martel or Richard but I still think Sun Tzu at 60 is fantastic because if you want to, you can run him as a primary. He is very strong. Yulji is running behind him. I'm not a huge fan of Yulji, but as you can see, I don't have very many uh, commanders unlocked. I don't think Bajorn is that great. I've never really he used him in PvP. Obviously, as expertise, he gets an area of effect skill, which is great. But I still probably won't use him. Uh, Herman, again, he's archers. Skip him. Uh, Kuzanoki can be good. He has a bit of an area of effect skill. He also gets rid of, uh, immediately removes control, slow down, poison, exhaust, and other debuffs. So he can be good, but I don't really suggest it. Other, I don't suggest working CPO. He's obviously better than Caesar, like I said. But he's not that great in open field fighting. If I see a CPO out in the field, I know I'm going to get good trades. So I'm probably going to target him. Yeah, he's a bit of a tank, 
but he's not focused on one type of troop. So I think that leaves him open to, to getting circled and, and really wrecked in the field. Boudicca's peacekeeping, don't suggest it for PvP. Great for Guardians and Barbarians. Otherwise, I don't suggest using her for anything other than that. Joan of Arc is awesome. I will definitely be working her to expertise. I don't think I'll get her to level 60, but she is going to really help out your whales. And I think she's very important when she gets her expertise. Her primary skill that boosts uh, archers, uh, infantry, and cavalry, and gives your five friends around you extra rage as well. She is fantastic for supporting your whales. Really suggest her. Uh, like I said earlier, in my first KVK, I ran Pelagius and Mina behind him to hide him. Pelagius is decent. He's like an epic version of Tao Tao. I think he's really good. Um, I might run him if I eventually open him up, but I won't have Mina. So I don't know if it's going to be worth it. I might just stick with infantry on this account. Baybars is a bit of a glass cannon. He can die really quickly. He does have some great area of effect, especially when it's expertise. So it is a good option, but if somebody sees him cast a skill or sees him as a primary, you're going to be swarmed. It's just a matter of time. Uh, Osman, I've never really used him for fighting. Sometimes on my main, I'll use him as a secondary to bring extra troops because he has a troop capacity bonus. Besides that, I've never used him. Some people might say, okay, use him for rallying cities, which, okay, he has skills for that. Uh, where is it here? Yeah. So for attacking cities, you know, you get some extra buffs. Uh, I think that's about it really. Let a whale rally a city. It's just going to get better results. Uh, Belisarius is like Tau Tau as well with speed because he has mobility. People still use him in uh, late KVK to hunt down farms. I don't think he's that great. He does have an awesome skill where, uh, where is it here? Yeah, so when troops led by Belisarius are less than 50%, they do increase damage. But really, once you're under 50%, you should be running away anyways. So Belisarius is not the best option. We're not going to see an expertise Kira anytime soon in this kingdom. Um, she is fantastic. She would be good for field fighting. But I don't think you're going to get her expertise anytime soon because she only comes from Soroli Crisis and getting enough sculptures from her is probably going to take a long time when you're only doing easy and normal mode in Soroli Crisis. Uh, Matilda, she is a gathering commander. That's all she should be doing. Level 37 or 40, 27 at the start. We'll go over gathering commanders in a second. But that's all she should be doing is gathering. Same with Queen Tamar of Georgia, just a gatherer. Diochan, I don't really use her much. Maybe she's decent on the field, but she's a peacekeeping commander. I don't even hit barbs with her, to be honest with you. I think I have her at like level 50 or 60 on my main, but I don't even use her. Somehow, I don't have Centurion unlocked yet. Good gathering commander. I will get him to level 37 or 40. Besides that, don't use any, uh, what are these even called? Advanced commanders for anything. Dragon Lancer garbage, City Keeper garbage, Markswoman garbage. I only leveled them up a little bit for the extra power before I jumped. Um, I wouldn't suggest using any of these commanders for field fighting. Tameo, she can be somewhat decent if you're talking the first couple weeks into a kingdom because she does skill damage bonus, but I wouldn't spend any tomes on her. You'll get her finished just from normal silver keys and then leveling up through guardians or something. Let's quickly talk about gathering commanders. They should be level 27 to start. That's what this is. Level 37 is next, and that gets you 25% gathering speed bonus. Level 40 is pretty much the best. It gives you 30% march speed, which gets you to and from tiles for resources faster. Um, I do level them up higher on my main because I have so many experienced tomes for increased march speed, which uh, where is some here? There you go, there's some more march speed. You can just grab them. There's some more march speed and that just helps you gather things, especially when you're a gem gatherer like I am, card up at the top, you need as much march speed as possible. Um, Lohar, obviously just a peacekeeping commander, but one of the best peacekeeping commanders because he gives your 
commander that is with it, 70% extra experience. Great for leveling up commanders. I'll use Lohar as primary. I'll put whoever I want to level behind him, and you're going to get huge amounts of experience from Guardians or Barbarians from him. He's good at Barbarians, that's, that's for sure. But like I said before, for myself, I'm going to go full infantry. I might run Pelagius and maybe somebody else for cavalry. But I do not suggest spending any stars on somebody like uh, Cleopatra, Sion Diok, Ashida, and any of the other ones I mentioned. It's just not worth it. You're not going to get any value from it in long term. Somebody like uh, YSG right here, you're going to use him forever. Richard, you're going to use him forever. Charles, you can use forever. Um, other than that, Mulan late game, but even then I don't have her finished because she's so expensive. Really, I think the only three commanders that are legendary you should be working on are these three right here. They're the only ones I use now. I use Mina and Tao Tao for rallying barb forts, but really you could use other commanders for that. Ethelfled, obviously everyone should get Ethelfled. She is the best free to play commander. Of course, I get hit with a verification notice. And that's finished. We'll quickly do this. I don't want to stop that stuff. Okay, so that's pretty much what I suggest how I'm doing it. Um, experience tomes you should be using on your main focus. I'm going to be doing Sun Tzu. So I'll be leveling him up since I already have three gathering commanders. Once I get a fourth march available, I will upgrade another gathering commander and it'll probably probably be centurion or matilda one of these or queen tamar um, but besides that most of my experience tomes will be going to sun tzu richard charles once i get them unlocked um, besides that i don't think there's really anything else if you don't know this already you should be locking your first skill and then making sure that's level five and then unlocking for the rest. Uh, let's just give you an example here. So if I go into uh, Yulji, I already have it locked. You can lock the skills that get upgraded and you want to make sure that your primary skill, the active skill is always going to five before you start working any of the other skills. That goes for every commander in the game, only exceptions and I wanna stress this is somebody like Cleopatra where you'll want to try and skip the first skill and just get the bonuses for gathering and troop load that's the same for Sion Diok you'll want this one you don't want the primary and that's the same for Ashida these are different kind of commanders these are not meant for field fighting they're just meant for gathering so that's why they have exceptions to them um, let's just quickly jump over to my main Just show, I can show you. We'll quickly jump here. Fortunately, I'm going to have to get sidetracked with gem farming as well. But quickly, what I'll show you. This is late game. So let's show you that first as I'll zoom out. We'll go to here, 1937. So it's been going for 579 days. It is a late game kingdom. My account is 1133 days old. Consecutive login days is actually a little bit older than that. Uh, actually, no, it was exactly the same as that. I did the math on it for Mark's Woman because that's how you tell how old an account is. And I've never missed a login day. Um, let's go into... No, that's not where I wanted to go. We want to go into Sunset Canyon. So the top players in this kingdom are using... YSG is really the only commander... That Cherith is using, one of our biggest whales. Um, you've got Ethelfled, Sun Tzu, Richard, Charles. You've got Joan of Arc. A lot of the commanders you can use now are in late game. You can still use them. I'm rank 90. I haven't used my challenges yet. I've been focusing on this alt account. You'll see Ethelfled again. You'll see YSG again. You'll see Richard again. These are very good commanders to work because you'll be able to use them forever. There's Joan of Arc. There's Richard, there's YSG. Again, these are very old commanders that are still being used now. Charles, Mulan, which is nice. I think he has his expertise. That's why he's using her. Um, Richard, YSG. Like you'll notice this in any kingdom you go to, 
those commanders are still being used and those are the ones I think you should work. And they're the ones that I use all the time, which is why they have gear on them, which is why I don't think Charles does because I'm not using him as a primary right now. Um, Ethelfled is just as a secondary as well, but I still use them all the time. As you can tell, see on Dioc expertise, but hard to use the stars on them. I, I don't suggest it. Same with Ishida, just a gatherer. That's all they're doing. You don't want to use them for anything else. Um, Epics, yeah, I'm pretty much finished all of them. Yeah, there's my Dio Chan. I don't ever use her. I haven't even thought about bringing her to level 60 just because I don't find any use for her. But that's really it. And yeah, I've been bored in the past for Guardians and gotten all of these up to level 60. Forget them for now. I just have way too many experienced tomes. So sometimes I get bored and work commanders. So it is what it is. Again, I don't have much experience with Ragnar, so I don't know if he's good. But those are my suggestions. Really focus on commanders that are going to last a long time because this is a long-term game. This isn't something you want to be making a jumper all the time for, right? You want to see end game. You want to enjoy it. And you want your investments in commanders to last for a long time. But that's all I got for this time. How long was that? That was 21 minutes long. So a very long video. Those are my suggestions. I will come up with other videos coming up on talent tree builds, get more in depth. Once we start getting equipment, I'll have on that as well. So stay tuned. Please hit the like and subscribe and I will see you guys soon. Talk to you later.